meme is a cognitive or behavioral pattern that can be transmitted from one individual to another. Because of this, they are often called mind viruses. For example, looking both ways before you cross the road is a meme. In general, memes do not work on your rational mind, but rather they affect your unconscious, emotionally driven, entangled decision-making process. Another way of thinking about memes is as ideas or neologisms that distribute themselves through a population. In a very real sense, we are a collection of other people's minds. Uh, George Herbert Mead once said that a person who is saying something is saying to himself what he says to others, or else he doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, exactly. Your, your mind isn't in your head, it's actually between you and other people. The only reason you think it's in your head is that you can talk to yourself only after you've learned to talk to other people. I mean, if you think about it, it's sort of like there are these, there's you and there are these communication linkages that you have to other people and the things that you've read and the television that you've watched and then this I and that me that you have inside your head that talks to itself well that's actually the product and the outcome of talking with other people memes to become the entrenched thoughts and behavioral characteristics of our personalities since ideas get fixed in our minds they become our reality often for our entire lives Don Juan said we talk to ourselves incessantly about our world. In fact, we maintain our world with our internal talk. And whenever we finish talking to ourselves about ourselves and our world, the world is always as it should be. We renew it. We rekindle it with life. We uphold it with our internal talk. Not only that, but we also choose our path as we talk to ourselves. Thus, we repeat the same choices over and over until the day we die, because we keep on repeating the same internal talk over and over until the day we die. In the mimetic ideosphere, the persona or projected virtual self is created by a process of remixing the available memes and subcultures by deforming, transforming, or refusing specific aspects of the cultural meme pool. Sorting and selecting from the memes available, most of us pre-consciously create a composite identity that is worn as a vehicle to navigate and negotiate social spaces. Language and symbolic processes have transformed learning and behavior from a biological instrument to a linguistic one. Our ideas are our children. When a person dies, they are remembered for who they were and their knowledge that they imparted to others. They have their own mimetic entity that exists outside of space and time. Thoughts are eternal, living and dynamic entities. Ideas go on after we depart and they mingle in the fertile grounds of other people's imagination. Modern science is the child of memes fostered by the generation of science before it. The same can be said for any other field of study. Information is neutral, and just like a newly born child, an idea is neither good or bad. Some of our mimetic children grow up and lead to pioneering breakthroughs in neuroscience. Others grow up into far more destructive ideas, like the atomic bomb. With great ideas come great responsibility. Unfortunately, our morals and ethics have not caught up with our technology. A fundamental underlying problem with the education system is that children are taught what to think. They have memes fostered on them, and not how to think, i.e. meme bearing. The mimetic heritage of Isaac Newton, René Descartes and Charles Darwin, for instance, have overgrown and overstayed their welcome by creating a stagnant pool of scientific dogma in the collective mind. The excess of materialism and scientism has slaughtered and homogenized the fragile ecosystems of other more artistically talented mimetic children. We should each aim to spread memes of hope, of inspiration, of beauty, of moral philosophy. Eleanor Roosevelt said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Memes fall under the umbrella term of thought forms, which are a manifestation of mental energy. Tibetan tulpas, Jungian archetypes, magical egregors, and even morphic fields are all thought forms which can be applied in different contexts. Morphic fields are fields of habit, and what is habit but a pattern of thought? Another example of a morphic field could be that of group mind, for instance the hundredth monkey effect, whereby once the threshold of a population begin to exhibit the same behavioral traits, it instantaneously becomes imprinted in the rest of the population. The Gregors, like Tulpas, can be invoked in a magical context. They are autonomous entities that are the result of a group mind. For example, people working within a certain corporation will exhibit traits that are influenced by the cultural memes of the company. 
If we don't maintain a dynamic and varied environment, then it is easy to get pigeonholed. You hear about people becoming stereotypical manifestations of their job's role over time. If what you do can determine who you are, then people can become literally possessed by an occupational egregore. Of course, individuals will differ to the degree that they embody this archetypal ideal, but we can find many mimetic similarities which stereotype them. It is interesting to observe that certain egregores are granted a legal personality, which provides rights, protections, privileges, responsibilities and liabilities under corporate law. Trademarks are likewise a mimetic entity. Even people have a legal personality that is created at birth via the birth certificate, and in fact it is this entity which is liable for any breach of contract or statutory law. When a person goes to court, they are asked if they understand, but this is legalese. What is actually being asked is do you stand under their authority? Check out John Harris and the TPUC for more on this legal mumbo jumbo. From every birth certificate, a legal personality, or legal fiction, is created with the same name to confuse little old you into thinking it's you. So, there is a human you and a paper you, or as it's commonly known, a straw man. So when it seems like government officials, court clerks, or the police are speaking English, they aren't. They're speaking legalese, designed to make you agree to verbal and written contracts without even knowing about it. Consider that the so-called astral realm is a mental space, and when a thought gains enough momentum, it literally begins to manifest in subtle ways, and eventually will materialize if perpetuated for long enough. Everything starts with a thought. From my own entheogenic experiences, I have the analogy that egregores or archetypes, deities, whatever you want to call them, are in a symbiotic relationship with each of us, consciously or unconsciously. We provide psychic energy which maintains thought forms and gives more momentum and power to them. In return, they influence the collective unconscious and affect events which come to pass. After all, our mind is not inside our head, but rather everywhere and everything. When enough people invest their attention into particularly potent memes, they not only change our consciousness, but the world as well. These empowered memes are themselves expressions of a deeper process of awakening that the universe is going through. Memetic entities are not bound by space and time, and so they can act like higher dimensional portals through which we are able to change the programming of the cosmic computer when we collectively realize the power of memes to create our shared reality. A further point of interest with regards to memes is their relationship to the WebBot project which uses a form of radical linguistics to derive emotional trends and predict future events. In a sense, it is as though words and phrases take on a telepathic quality, emanations of thought forms. By watching the change in the context of emotive language over time, the WebBot guys are able to predict certain things at an archetypal level. Technology serves as a vector for memes. If it weren't for the internet, then you would not be hearing these thoughts. The internet has allowed memes to spread rapidly and for diversity to increase. True democracy is really the extent to which everyone is able to share their thoughts in a decentralized fashion. We are embedded in a sea of mimetic content. This content is determined now by the collective pool of individuals more now than ever before and people have more control over what memes they are exposed to as a result. This also means that people can cocoon themselves in media that confirms their pre-existing biases and this is where fractal notions of self-similarity in mimetic construction can smuggle across new energy, mimic an outer layer, and create an entrainment by properly encoded semantic value, and therefore any stagnant mimetic ecology will rapidly mutate. To do this properly takes both skill and experience, yet thanks to the interconnected nature of daily life, we will now have relatively equal potential to initiate such a catalyst. Susan Blackmore coined the term teams for technological memes, there has been a consistent, persistent acceleration in the cycle of feedback from the memes inside us and the memes we put out into the world. The world is steadily becoming more and more virtual as memes materialize into the world through technology. What this points to is that memes are transferring their host from the human mind to a synthetic mind via artificial intelligence, literally turning the mind inside out. As has been hinted at in earlier sections, our language and memes are rapidly leading us into a brave new world of transhumanism. This idea was born from the eugenics movement, which of course is a popular philosophy within the ruling elite. 
the migration to an artificial world is an effort to engineer a sort of artificial unity. It is an effort to cleanse humanity of that which makes us human. Humanness is seen as a weakness. Death is a problem to be solved. Transhumanism bulldozes over all the psychological issues of mankind and replaces them with a sterile and broken whole.